Greetings! Linux Experiences Device Edition. This time we are talking about the Elgato Stream Deck. So grab your cup of coffee and listen to my experiences I had with this device to make your stream a little bit more comfortable. Uh, speaking of streams, um, you can watch me using this device in action on Twitch. Uh, link is in the description below. So if you like, chime in live and see how I'm using that, at least on the pancake streams. Pancake? Pancake is the expression for non-VR streams. But even for VR, it might be helpful at uh, sometimes. But nevertheless, let's start with uh, the beginning. The Elgato Stream Deck is more or less the standard device for streamers. And Elgato did a very good job with that device. It's, um, it's a keyboard that doesn't have keys, like normal keys on your keyboard, but it has little pictures. So you can put little images behind those buttons and that makes it very comfortable to see with one look uh, what which button does and that helps a lot. So I saw that that a lot of streamers were using that and friends were using that already for a while and I always wanted to have one but when you googled on the internet with uh, Elgato Stream Deck Linux support unfortunately Elgato doesn't support Linux yet so the open source community has to help out here but that took quite a while so when i saw people using that that has been already a few years ago and i was googling for linux support of the elgato stream deck again and again but in october 2019 i first saw that there was a gui on linux that would support the elgato stream deck and i've seen that on gaming on linux and even then I was like, yeah, okay, I, I'm not sure if I really would need this device because the price isn't that low. So you want to think about if you really would need that. And there are alternatives. So for example, OBS, and that's mostly what you use the Elgato Stream Deck for. OBS does support web sockets and then you can remote control OBS through a web browser. But the UI of that isn't that nice so having a little device there also you would have to have another pc or tablet for that and connect that to your lan and have then connected that via a web page to your obs instance and even then you need to click with your mouse so you would have to aim with your mouse and hopefully you don't misclick somewhere i mean the um, web interface that's available there at least does have a confirm button for going live or stopping the stream so we would have to wait a second and then click again so the most important thing you cannot mess up but like changing scenes and stuff you don't want to or disabling an overlay accidentally that can totally happen there and if you have a haptics device where you can feel the buttons you want to touch uh, that's way more convenient and you can do that without looking so if you know what button is on which position, it's a, it's a lot easier. When I saw the Stream Deck UI, I was thinking even a little bit more about the device. I said the price isn't that low, but uh, there was some time where I thought, okay, it's available here right now, the price is okay. I thought I'd go with the 15 buttons device. There are three uh, versions of the Stream Deck, a small one with six buttons, the normal one with 15 buttons and even an extra large version with 32 buttons. But I think the 15 button version is, is a good start. And depending on what you need, maybe even the small one is enough. I went with the 15 button device and um, I don't want to miss it anymore. So getting the tool to run Stream Deck UI wasn't was more or less straightforward there is a ubuntu install script and you need to have the udev rules for that device in place and that's taken care of with the install script so uh, you would just need to reload the udev rules and that can be done with the um, command or if you just reboot your computer normally you don't reboot linux but as i said you can do it with a command so you don't have to reboot the reboot will do it for sure though. And after that you can plug it in and the tool does recognize that. 
So for the configuration, um, there are several things you should know. It's a standalone version, open source, and it's not supported by Elgato. So feature-wise, it's probably lacking some features that the Windows version ha has. I've never used the Windows version, so I don't know what's, what I'm missing. But with the things I can do with that, I'm totally fine. And let me explain or let me tell you what I'm using that for. So for the icons, I'm using the free Nerd or Die Clarity icon pack. You can download that from Nerd or Die for free. It has a lot of icons that are suitable. There are images for arrows, for programs, uh, for scenes, for cameras, for devices. So depending on what you want, for example, to start before you start your screen. So you can click on the buttons for starting the programs automatically. Maybe you want to have Discord started in the background because some channels are using your Discord status for the go live notification. Or maybe you want to have Spotify running already so you can uh, play your favorite royalty free music playlist during your stream. So there are icons for that. And uh, you can also, of course, create your own icons based on that because the design of those icons is, is following a certain line and changing the colors or the icon there itself, that's pretty straightforward. For example, I created my own icons for changing the little Tux icon that's based on Valiant Cheese um, stencil Tux. And there I'm showing on which device or uh, with which device I'm playing uh, the game that's currently being shown on stream and which compatibility layer I'm using there. For example, if I'm playing that through Vanilla Wine, I have a little wine icon there. Or if I'm playing that on Stadia, I use the Google Stadia icon there. And uh, I have a little button where I can switch those icons. I'm showing which HMD I'm using. So for example, if I'm using the HTC Vive, it has a different icon. If I'm using the Valve Index, it has a different icon. So you can see what I'm using there and I don't want to exchange that image every time manually. I want to have that switched just by a button. And that's why I can press the little key on my Elgato Screen Deck and it works. So how is that done? You can get those icons uh, through the UI, of course. You choose, there's a, there's a file dialog where you choose the icon you're using. Just beware that the location of that file has to be fixed. So if you delete that file, it won't show the next time you start the tool anymore on your Stream Deck. So better create a special folder, maybe save that file on your cloud service. So you can have that on multiple PCs even, because every time you switch to the page or you restart the tool, it reloads those icons. And if it can't find the icon anymore, it's not shown. With that, you can get those icons. So maybe you want to execute a special program when pressing that button and I'm executing a little script that exchanges those icons in place. And uh, there's a special entry where you can enter a command. Just be aware that command uh, shall be with an absolute path. And if the command fails, somehow the Stream Deck UI tool locks up and doesn't work properly anymore. So make sure that command is running flawlessly. So with running commands, that's one feature you can use of that tool. But you can also use, of course, shortcuts. And shortcuts have their own issue. <laughs> I have to admit that. You can enter any shortcut there. For example, Control plus F1 or so. The issue is, though, if the tool doesn't have focus, it doesn't send this shortcut to the application that does have the focus right now. And if you are playing a game and you want to change the scene and that's done with the shortcut, with the keyboard shortcut, and it doesn't work, that's not very helpful then. So the workaround here is to use the XDO tool on Linux. And you are executing a command again, so you are not using the shortcut feature, but you're using a command. And with that, it does work on every application. You just need to figure out which shortcut you want to use, but it works then if the tool doesn't have focus anymore. So those are the two things you shall be aware of. The pictures have to be in place every time 
and when executing a shortcut it should be done through the command line and as i said there is the small version with six buttons and the big version with 32 buttons but i think the version for 50 with 50 buttons is good enough because if you have certain subsets of commands for example what i'm using is i have a preparation page because the tool does have support for several pages and i have a preparation page where i'm adjusting the camera settings for example so disabling autofocus disabling the white balance and that's done through scripts that i have on my um, cloud drive and those are executed from the command line again just by pressing one of those buttons so i have a page for preparation and then i have a page for um, the game scene for the stream scene when going live one button is starting the stream so i have a shortcut in place that is also configured on obs end in the shortcuts that would start and stop the stream there's one feature missing on the stream deck ui and that is a toggle button so you need to know if your stream is running or if it's not running because you can't see that it is in which state it is right now. At least that's not without any workarounds. What you can do is exchange the image with a shell script that would exchange the icon and then you can see that. Or just um, if you don't press that button too often, just uh, look at OBS and if it's live, you know, it pressing the button again, it will stop the stream. So you configure shortcuts with the XDO tool and um, these shortcuts you also then enter on OBS's end. And what you can do there is after you configure the XDO tool command as a command for that button, you can press that button while having in OBS end the shortcut page open and pressing that shortcut on the Elgato Stream Deck when that entry has focus and then it does enter exactly that shortcut that you're entering there and with that i can control my stream more or less as i like there are very little drawbacks that might the that the windows version might have but you can get around with that and if you think that's not officially supported it's very awesome to have this device being able to be used on linux so as mentioned already before, if you want to see me using this live in action, you can chime in onto my Twitch stream. I hope you enjoyed the information I told you here about the Stream Deck. And if you are thinking about getting one, you now know how to use it on Linux and that it does work on Linux. So if you enjoyed the information you heard here, please leave a thumbs up and maybe a comment even. Subscribe to this channel and chime in on my Twitch stream. Thanks for watching and never stop gaming.